So let's say if we have the polar equation r is equal to sine 2 theta, and we're told to find the area enclosed by one petal of the polar curve. How can we do so? Now the first thing I recommend doing is to graph the equation. And so when you graph this equation, you should get something that looks like this. It's not a perfect graph, but this is the generic shape. And so there are four petals in this curve. And we only need to find the area of just one of them because they're all the same. So let's choose this one. How can we find the area of the shaded region? Now there's a formula that we need to use. And the area is going to be the definite integral from alpha to beta, one half r squared d theta. And so we have a formula for r. It's sine 2 theta. Now what is alpha and what is beta? This particular petal is bounded by the angles theta equals 0 degrees and also the angle at 90 degrees or pi over 2. So therefore, the area is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 2, 1 half times r squared or sine squared 2 theta. Now, in order to evaluate this definite integral, you need to be familiar with the power reducing formulas. For example, sine squared theta is 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. So what do you think sine squared 2 theta is equal to? Well, we're going to have to double the angle from 2 theta to 4 theta. So let's go ahead and replace sine squared 2 theta with what we see here. So that's going to be 1 half times 1 minus cosine 4 theta. Now we can multiply a half times a half, which is 1 fourth, and move that to the front. So now we're in a position to take the integral of this expression. But let's get rid of some stuff first. So what is the antiderivative of 1? or 1 d theta. That's going to be theta. And the antiderivative of cosine is going to be sine. But the antiderivative of cosine 4 theta is sine 4 theta divided by 4. And let's evaluate this from 0 to pi over 2. So we're going in that direction from 0 to pi over 2. So let's replace theta with pi over 2. So this is going to be sine 4 times pi over 2 divided by 4. And then if we plug in 0, theta is 0. And sine 4 times 0, which is sine of 0, that's 0. So we're going to have 1 fourth times pi over 2 now, 4 times pi over 2, that's 2 pi. And sine of 2 pi is 0. So then this becomes 1 fourth times pi over 2, which is simply pi over 8. And so that is the area of the shader region. Now let's work on another similar problem. This time, r is going to equal 2 cosine 3 theta. So just like before, we're going to make a graph. And if you need help making these graphs, you can check out a video that I created, Graph and Polar Equations. I'm going to put that in the description of this video. And also, there's another video that I have created where I can show you how to graph these equations online. So you can check that in the description section of the video when you're done. Now, this particular graph looks like this. It has three petals. Let me see if I can draw this better. because these petals are not 
very thick, so to speak. Now the radius is 2. So these petals are 2 units long based on this number. So how can we find the area enclosed by one of these petals? Let's choose that one. How can we do so? So let's start with our equation. The area is the integral from alpha to beta, 1 half r squared d theta. Now the issue here is finding the angles, alpha and beta. How can we do so? How can we find those angles? So we're going to draw a line. We need to find the two angles that correspond to those two dashed lines. Now a key to finding it is the number 3 in front of theta. If you take 90 degrees and divide it by 3, you're going to get 30. And it turns out that that first petal is bounded between negative 30 and 30, or negative pi over 6 and pi um, over 6. Now let's think about why. Because if you plug in, let's say, 31 degrees into theta, you're going to get cosine 93. And you're not going to get an answer in quadrant 1. 93 is in quadrant 2. And so by plugging in an angle that's 31, which should be in this region, we get nothing in this region. So that's how we know that it should be bounded by pi over 6. So you got to use some intuition here in figuring these things out. But that's my rationale for stopping at pi over 6. So let's go ahead and finish this problem. So the area is going to be the integral from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6, and then it's 1 half times 2 cosine 3 theta squared d theta. So 2 squared is 4, and 4 times a half is 2. And I'm going to move that 2 to the front. So I have 2 times a definite integral from negative 30 to 30. And then I have cosine squared 3 theta d theta. Now, cosine squared theta, using the power reducing formulas, it's 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So what if we have cosine squared 3 theta? Well, we need to double 3 theta to 6 theta. So it's going to be 1 half, 1 plus cosine 6 theta. So this is what we now have. 1 half times 1 plus cosine 6 theta, d theta. At this point, we can cancel 2 and 1 half. So now we're left over with this expression. So we just have 1 plus cosine 6 theta, d theta. The antiderivative of 1 is going to be theta, and the antiderivative of cosine is sine, but 6 theta divided by 6, evaluated from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. So let's plug in pi over 6 first. So we're going to have pi over 6, and then 6 times pi over 6 is pi, and sine of pi is 0. And then minus negative pi over 6, and 6 times negative pi over 6, that's negative pi, sine of negative pi is also 0. So we have pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 6, and we can reduce that to pi over 3. And so this is the final answer. That's the area of just one petal of the polar curve. So if you want to find the area for all three petals, just multiply it by 3, and it's going to be pi. Now here's the next problem. Let's say that r squared is equal to 4 cosine 2 theta. Find the area enclosed by the polar curve. So this formula correlates to the lemnus gates. r squared is equal to a squared cosine 2 theta. And if you want to know the shapes of these types of polar curves and how to graph them, 
just check out my video on graph and polar equations, which I'm going to put in the description section of this video. Now, this particular graph has this general shape. where this is a and this is negative a. So in this case, this is going to be 2 and this is going to be negative 2. Now we want to find the area enclosed by the polar curve, not just of one petal. So this time, we need to find the total area. Due to symmetry, what we're going to do is find the area of just the loop on the right and then multiply it by 2. But the issue here is finding the angles. So what are the angles that the first loop is bounded by? I'm pretty sure you can make a good guess, but notice that we have 2 theta. So 90 divided by 2 is 45. It turns out that this one is negative pi over 4, and this one is 45 or pi over 4. And so we're going to integrate it from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. So let's write our area equation. It's the integral from alpha to beta, 1 half r squared, that's a terrible looking 2, d theta. So we already have r squared. We don't need to square it again. So then the area is going to be the integral from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, 1 half times r squared, which is 4, cosine 2 theta d theta. So first let's multiply a half by 4. 1 half times 4 is 2. I'm going to move that to the front. And so all we need to do is integrate cosine 2 theta d theta, which should be pretty straightforward. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, but for cosine 2 theta it's going to be sine 2 theta divided by 2 evaluated from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. So we can cancel these two. And so this is going to be sine 2 times pi over 4 minus sine 2 times negative pi over 4. 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. So we have sine pi over 2 minus sine negative pi over 2. Sine pi over 2 is 1, and sine negative pi over 2, that's the same as sine as 3 pi over 2, and that's negative 1. So 1 plus negative 1 is 2. And so this is the answer that we have. Now keep in mind, this is just for a one loop, not two. So the area for two loops is going to be 4. So this is the total area of the lemnus gate. So just so you can see a picture. So the area on the right is 2, the area on the left is 2, so the total area is 4. Now let's work on another similar example. Let's say that r is equal to 3 cosine theta. So go ahead and try this problem. So let's begin with a graph. And this basically looks just like one circle. In fact, it is a circle, though my drawing doesn't accurately show that. So how can we find the area of the shaded region? What do we need to do? Well, we need to find the angles. So we need to integrate it from this region, which appears to be negative pi over 2, and from this region, which appears to be pi over 2. So we're going to integrate it from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Another way in which you could find those angles is by setting r equal to 0 and solving for theta. So you have 0 is equal to cosine theta. And cosine theta is equal to 0 when theta is pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So if you're ever having difficulties finding the angle, set r equal to 0 and solve for theta. Now let's go ahead and find the area. So let's use the formula, the integral from alpha to beta, 1 half r squared d theta. So alpha is negative pi over 2 in this example, beta is pi over 2, 
and r squared is going to be 3 squared is 9, so we're going to have 9 and then cosine squared theta. So let's move the 9 over 2 to the front. And let's replace cosine squared with 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So don't forget the power reducing formulas. Now let's multiply 9 over 2 by 1 over 2. So that becomes 9 over 4 on the outside. So at this point, we can now find the antiderivative of 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So the antiderivative of 1 is going to be theta. And for cosine 2 theta, it's going to be sine 2 theta divided by 2, evaluated from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now let's plug in the numbers that we have. So theta is pi over 2. And then sine 2 theta, 2 times pi over 2 is pi. Sine of pi is 0. And then minus. Now it's going to be negative pi over 2. And then sine 2 times negative pi over 2, that's sine negative pi, which is also 0. And so we're going to have 9 over 4 times pi over 2 minus the other pi over 2. Well, there's two negatives. I'm going to factor out 9 over 4. So I'm going to have these two inside one parenthesis. So it's going to be negative and then the other negative, pi over 2. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2, that becomes pi. So the answer is 9 pi over 4. Now, another way in which we can get the same answer is by using the area of a circle. Now the graph was r equals 3 cosine theta. And so this point is 3, which means that the diameter of the circle is equal to 3. Therefore, the radius has to be half of that. The radius is at 3 over 2. I mean, the center is located at 3 over 2, so the radius is going to be 3 over 2. because 3 over 2 is half of 3. And so the area is going to be pi r squared. And so let's replace the radius with 3 over 2. And 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. So the area is 9 pi over 4. So that's the other way in which you can get the same answer. For the next problem, we have that r is 1 plus 2 sine theta. And we need to find the area of the inner loop. So let's begin by graphing the polar curve. And so the graph is going to look something like this. So this is 1 and negative 1. This is going to be the difference between 2 and 1. So that's 1. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is located at 3. So those are the points of interest on that particular curve. But our goal is to find the area of the shaded region, basically the area of the inner loop. How can we do so? So how can we find the angles that contain the inner loop? So let's analyze this carefully. So going from this part to this part in yellow, the angle changes from 0 to pi over 2. Now, highlighted in blue, that region represents the angle changing from pi over 2 to pi. Now, in green, what does that angle represent? Well, let's draw a line. Let's call this A and B. So in green, it goes from pi to some angle A. But notice that there's nothing in this region. And in that region, that's when it begins to make the loop, which I'm going to highlight in purple. So the loop 
it goes from A to B because there's nothing here. And then in this region, it emerges from B and goes back to 2 pi. So we need to integrate this from A to B. That's going to be the region for the loop. So how do we find A and B? So in this case, you have to set R equal to 0. Because at A, that's where it touches the origin. That's where R is 0. And then after it does a full loop, it goes back to the origin. And that's at B. So at A and B, R is 0. So you need to set R equal to 0 and solve for the angle theta. Subtracting both sides by 1, we're going to have negative 1 is equal to 2 sine theta, and then we need to divide by 2. So negative 1 half is equal to sine theta. So sine of what angles are equal to negative 1 half? We know sine pi over 6, or sine 30 degrees, is 1 half. But sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. And so we need the angle that corresponds to a reference angle of pi over 6, but in quadrants 3 and 4. So in quadrants 3, 7 pi over 6 has a reference angle of pi over 6, and the same is true for 11 pi over 6. My graph is not perfect, but these are the angles that we need. So now let's calculate the area using this formula. So alpha is 7 pi over 6, and beta is 11 pi over 6. R is 1 plus 2 sine theta, and we need to square that. So this is the integral that we now have. At this point, it's all math. Now the first thing we need to do is FOIL that expression. So 1 plus 2 sine theta times 1 plus 2 sine theta. 1 times 1, that's going to be 1. And then we have 1 times 2 sine theta. And then 2 sine theta times 1. And finally, 2 times 2, which is 4. And then sine times sine, so that's sine squared. So this becomes 4 sine squared. And then we need to combine like terms. Therefore, plus 4 sine theta plus 1. So this is going to be, I'm going to move the 1 half to the front, as always. And now we have 4 sine squared plus 4 sine theta plus 1 d theta. Now let's use the power reducing formulas on sine squared. sine squared, we can replace that with 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. So now let's simplify what we have. So we have 4 times a half, which is 2. And then we need to distribute the 2 to 1 minus cosine 2 theta. So it's 2 times 1. That's 2. And then minus 2 cosine 2 theta plus 4 sine theta. And then plus 1. So 2 plus 1, we can make that 3. So now in this form, we can now integrate it. So the antiderivative of 3 is going to be 3 theta. And the antiderivative of cosine is sine, but we're going to have sine 2 theta over 2. And the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And all of this evaluated from 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6. And don't forget, we have a 1 half in the front. 
So let's start by plugging in 11 pi over 6. So 3 times 11 pi over 6, that's going to become 11 pi over 2. You need to divide 6 by 3 and get 2. Now the 2's will cancel. And so we're going to have 2 theta. So 11 pi over 6 times 2, that becomes 11 pi over 3. So we're going to have minus sine 11 pi over 3, and then minus 4 cosine 11 pi over 6. And then let's subtract this by plugging this in. So 3 times 7 pi over 6, that's going to be 7 pi over 2, and then minus sine 7 pi over 6 times 2, that becomes 7 pi over 3, and then minus 4 cosine 7 pi over 6. Now let's distribute the 1 half. So this is going to be 11 pi over 4. Now let's evaluate sine of 11 pi over 3. Now if we find a coterminal angle, we need to subtract this by 2 pi to get that coterminal angle. So 11 pi over 3 minus 2 pi, or 11 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, that becomes 5 pi over 3. And so these two, they have the same value. So what is sine 5 pi over 3? That's in quadrant 4. Sine 5 pi over 3 is negative square root 3 over 2. And then we need to multiply that by a half, so that's going to be over 4. Now there's two negatives, so this is going to become a positive. Now cosine 11 pi over 6, that's in quadrant 4, so it's going to be positive. Cosine 11 pi over 6 is positive square root 3 over 2. So this is going to be negative 4 times square root 3 over 2, and then times a half. So we can cancel 2, 2, and 4. So that just becomes negative square root 3. And then minus 7 pi over 2 times a half. That's 7 pi over 4. And then sine 7 pi over 3. Subtract that by 2 pi. 7 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. That becomes sine pi over 3, which is the square root of 3 over 2 but we have two negative signs, so it's going to be positive, square root 3 over 2, but times a half, it's going to be square root 3 over 4. Now, cosine 7 pi over 6, that's in quadrant 3, that's negative square root 3 times, it's negative square root 3 over 2, rather, times negative 4, times negative a half. So we have three negatives, the 4 will cancel with the 2's on the bottom. So overall, it's going to be negative square root 3. Now let's combine these two. 11 pi over 4 minus 7 pi over 4. That's 4 pi over 4, which is pi. And then the square root of 3 over 4 plus the square root of 3 over 4. That's 2 square root 3 over 4, which becomes the square root of 3 over 2. And then combining these two together, that's going to be negative 2 square root 3. Now, these two terms are similar, but let's combine this into one single fraction. So let's get common denominators. I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2 and do the same here. So this becomes 2 pi over 2 plus 1 square root 3 over 2 minus 4 square root 3 over 2. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So we have 2 pi over 2 minus 3 square root 3 over 2. So we can write the final answer as 2 pi minus 3 square root 3 over 2. Now let's get the decimal value for this answer. And so this is going to be 
3516 approximately. Now let's say that r is 5 plus 2 sine theta. Find the entire area enclosed by this polar curve. So if you graph it, it looks almost like a circle, but not exactly a circle. Now this point is positive 5 and this point is negative 5. To get this point it's going to be 5 minus 2 which is well it's supposed to be 2 minus 5 which is negative 3 and to get this point up here let me put that in blue it's 5 plus 2 which is 7. So how can we calculate the area of the shaded region? Go ahead and try it. So because we want everything, we need to integrate it in one full rotation. That is from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to go all the way around this figure, one complete rotation. So we're just going to use this formula. The area is going to be the integral from alpha to beta, 1 half r squared d theta. So alpha is 0, beta is 2 pi, and r is 5 plus 2 sine theta. And then we need to square it. Now, I'm not going to work out this example because it's very similar to the last problem. And so all you need to do is FOIL, then use the power of reducing formula on sine squared, and then you can finish it yourself. But if you use your calculator, you should get 27 pi as your final answer. And so that's the area of the region. Let's work on one more problem. Let's say that r is 4 plus 3 sine theta. And so the graph that corresponds to that polar equation, it looks something like this. So this time, we're only going to find the area of the right side. Go ahead and work on that example. So we need to start from this region to this region. So that's from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And so using the same formula, it's going to be the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then it's 1 half r squared r is 4 plus 3 sine theta and then once you square it you're gonna get that and if you type this in your calculator you should get 41 pi divided by 4 and you could follow the same exact procedure to integrate that problem FOIL use the power reducing formula on sine squared simplify integrate plug in your numbers and you should get this answer so that's it for this video thanks for watching